Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. What you see on my screen is a little demo part I made up to show how we can take this part and machine it in four different setups, whether that be four different vices or fixture plate in four different positions. And the goal is to transfer the stock between each one of those setups. Pretty little simple part to machine. It's gonna require four setups to get it done. We're gonna need a top setup, we're gonna flip it over and machine the bottom, get rid of the hat and the counter bore and the chamfers. We'll stand it up and do the slots. And then the final setup, we can stand it up this way and drill and tap the hole that's on this part. So what I've done is I've created a new file and inside of this file, I've inserted a vise. And then what I've done is I've inserted a component that is that housing and I positioned it using joints where I want it to go. I added a second vise, this time using parallels. And then I flip the same component over onto the parallels and put it into position using joints. Turn on a third vise, here you can see no parallels and that's because in this orientation the part is kind of tall so I have the part resting on the vise bed. And in the final setup, I'm back to parallels and the parts just kind of stood up this way so I can drill and tap the component and those are the four setups that we're gonna work on. When I finish machining setup one, I want the stock for setup two to look like it did when I finished the part in, in setup one. And for setup three, I want it to look like setup two. And for setup four, I want it to look like setup three. So let's hop over to the manufacturer workspace and see how we go about doing that. I'm in the manufacturer workspace and to save some time on this video, since it's not about adding the tool pass, what I've done is I've created a setup with the tool pass required to machine the very first operation. I can simulate this and what you'll see is I drill the bore, face it, contour and finish the outside, rough the bore, come back and finish the bore, rough the counter bore, finish the counter bore, add the chamfer and break the edges. And when we look at the, what this part looks like when it's done, you can see that anything that's blue is remaining stock. And I have this carrier at the bottom. That is what the vice jaws are currently attached to. Now I want my second setup to look exactly like what I see here, only flipped over for when I create my second setup. So let's take a look and see how we do that. I'm gonna exit my simulation and I'm gonna start out just like any other setup and I'm gonna create a new setup and I'm gonna select my model. Now typically what we do is we just click on the body that we wanna machine. In this case, I don't wanna click on the body. I wanna to go to my models node and expand up my design and I'm gonna click on the second instance of my housing component. Note these are all components. They're all the same component. You can see they're all called housing V3, instance one, instance two, instance three, and instance four. So to Fusion, they are all the same component. And that's what I want to select. For my stock point, I want to choose a model box point in this case. And I'm going to choose the lower left corner. There's other choices you could make, but this is going to work for what we're doing. I'm also going to specify my fixture in this case, which is the vise. And I'm going to expand out my vise. And I'm going to click on my base, hold my shift button down, and select the last instance of the parallel. And I'll grab all the components between those two selections. And that now tells Fusion that all of those things are considered fixture. On the stock tab, I'm gonna do from proceeding setup, and I'm gonna make sure to check the box for continue rest machining. That's what's gonna make all of this work. And when I've got that done, I can hit okay. Now, right off the bat, it looks like a regular old setup. However, if I were to go down and turn on in process stock display, you'll see that that hat is now appearing on the second setup, just like it looked from the first setup when it was completed. I'm going to minimize my vice and my design. I'm gonna rename my second setup to be op two and I'm ready to do some tool pathing. I'm also gonna turn off in process stock display so we don't see that in this video. And to get rid of that hat of material, I'm gonna do a 3D adaptive clearing. I'm gonna drag out my operations manager so you guys can follow along a little bit better. And on the tool tab, I'm gonna select my face mill. I do this quite a bit for my flip sides. For the heights, I'm gonna machine from the highest to selected stock top, and I'm gonna to go to the highest to selected and it's gonna be the model top. Now look for a video on heights to be coming soon on this channel. And I think everybody's gonna be pretty pleased with what the video showed. On the passes tab, I'm gonna to go to my stock to leave field and I'm gonna leave my radial stock to be negative 
one hundred thousandths of an inch. In my axial stock, I'm going to leave a positive twenty thousandths of an inch that I want to eventually face off for a nice finish. I'm going to turn on smoothing, and with those changes, I can hit OK, and I get the tool pass that I need. So all that's going to do is just take off the top hat of material. If we look, the second side is very similar to the first side, so rather than programming this all from scratch again, I can steal some tool paths from the first setup and just copy those over. So I want this 2D adaptive. I'm going to hold down my command button or control button, depending on your OS, and I'm going to select the contour, the chamfer, and the edge break. Right click on those and say copy. Right click on my setup and say paste. I also want the face that I forgot to do, so let me copy and paste that in there as well. So I'll just paste that, and I want that tool path to be the second, so I'll just rearrange that. I'll click on my face. This one's easy. I'll just generate it, and it applies as second part. I'll double click on my adaptive to change that. I'm going to go to my geometry and throw that away, and now I'm going to click on the face that I want that to be applied to and hit OK. I want to edit my contour. Go to my geometry tab, throw in my contour and reselect it, hit OK, edit my chamfer tool path, which is a contour, go to my geometry, I'm going to throw away the chain and reselect the chain that I want. Now I know on this one, I also specified a pre-drill position, so I'm going to clear that. I'm sorry, I specified entry position, lead in position, so I'm going to choose the new entry position that I want and hit OK. And then I'm going to edit the final edge break, go to the geometry, clear my selections, and reselect the edges that should be broken in this operation. When I get those tool paths applied, I can go to my setup and do a simulate. And now we'll see the hat of material gets taken off. A facing tool path is done, the counter bore is taken care of, it's finished, and then the chamfering stuff happens. So that's what my part is going to look like when OP2 is done. I'm going to exit my simulation and we'll move over and start working on OP3. I'll create another setup. I'm going to select my model. Again, I want to go to my models node and I'm going to grab the third instance of my design. I want to grab my model box point and I'm going to choose this point right here for this one. I'm again going to specify my fixture by going to my third instance of my vise, in this case, and expanding that out. Now in this case, I wanna click on the base and I wanna go all the way down to the M12 screw. I don't want to include the parallels for this. On the stock tab, I'm gonna choose from proceeding setup and I will hit okay. And we have our setup created. I can still steal some of the tool paths from the last setup. So I know I want this adaptive, the contour and the edge break. So let me try that again. I had the shift button down and the edge break. I'll right click on those and say copy. I'm going to paste those into setup three. I can minimize some room back. So I'll just minimize my design back down. And I'll expand out my setup. I'll rename this to be op three. And then I can start out here by creating a slotting tool path. So I'm going to do a 2D slot. I'm going to expand this out a little bit so you guys can read it. And I will go to the tool tab. We'll grab this 3AS tool with a slotting preset. On my geometry, I'm just going to go grab this bottom edge and you can see it flattens it down to the lowest point. On my heights, I'm going to cut from the stock top here for the top height down to the selected contours minus 0.03 will go 30 thousandths of an inch past. And on the linking, all I'm going to do for a change here is I want to look, I'm going to ramp down a little more aggressively. I'm going to do four degrees. And I only want to start 10 thousandths of an inch above the top surface that I'm machining from. I can go ahead and hit OK. And there's my slotting tool path. I'll move that up to the top. Now I can take my adaptive tool path and just go and throw away the geometry, reselect the new face that I want. And I'm also going to specify a pre-drill position for this one. I've already slotted out that radius, so I'll choose a pre-drill position and grab that arc right there. I can hit OK. You see the tool path that we get. I'm going to edit my contour, throw away my chain, and select the chain that I want to machine. Now I know I did a really long lead-in on this, and I want to lead in on a particular area as well. So I'm gonna to go to the linking tab and I'm gonna reset my linear lead in distance to the system default. I don't need a 200 thousandths lead in on this. And I wanna specify my entry position as being that point right there. 
I can hit OK. And there's that toolpath. And then the final thing I need to do is just edit my chamfer toolpath that I have here, my edge break, throw in my two chains and grab the edges that I want and I can hit OK. And that takes care of my third setup. If I want to check it, I can simulate this. And I see that I get my slotting toolpath, my adaptive roughing to clear out the top and then the edge breaks that I want. So op three is done. So one more setup to go. I'm going to do another setup, select my model. Remember, we're going to grab it out of our models node. It's going to be the fourth instance of this part. I'm going to do a model box point again. Maybe I'll choose this corner this time. I'm going to specify my fixture by going to my fourth vise and I'm going to select the base all the way through the parallel. And then in the stock, I'm going to say continue rest machining and I'll hit OK. Now I can just do my spot drill, drill and tap so I can minimize all this back down again. I don't need to see all that. I'll do my drilling operation. I have a spot drill in this design already. Grab that with an aluminum drilling preset. The geometry is going to be my tapped hole. The heights are going to be from the hole top to the hole top. And then the bottom height offset is going to be minus 0.05. I'll hit OK. I want to do my tap drill now. Select it. I have this in the design already. It's the 2764 with an aluminum drilling preset. I'm going to select my geometry. On the heights, I want to drill tip through the bottom. I'm going to go 100 thousandths of an inch past the bottom and I'll hit OK. And the final thing I'll do is a tapping operation using the half 13 tap. Grab my geometry, click on this face. Heights, I want to drill the tip to the bottom. I'll go 150 thousandths through on this one. And uh, it's a tapping cycle already, so that takes care of my final operation. And if I were to simulate this setup, you'll see the only spot that has any material remaining is right there. You can also see that all the chamfers, all the little edge breaks I've done are also applied to the model. If I if you want to see that better, I can expand this out and turn off the housing four. And there you can see all the little edge breaks that have been applied. I'll turn that back on and minimize this back down. And then I can hit play and watch my simulation happen. So there I've got my everything done. Now remember the tap is always bigger than the pre-drill hole so that it's going to look like there. It's not right, but that's correct. And I can exit my simulation. So that shows you how you can transfer stock between different setups. Now, I selected all the vices as fixtures as we went through this. And it doesn't really look like I did that for a particular reason, but there is a good reason to do that. If I go to the bottom of my screen, I can click on this synchronize active setup drop down and I can choose to synchronize the view with the active setup as well as synchronize the visibility with the active setup. When I do that, my first three vices and parts are going to disappear and I'm only going to see what's associated with the active setup. Now, if I activate op one, you'll see that it turns all the rest of the things off and the correct things on for op one. Do that for op two do that for op three and do that for op four. And that only works because I selected the model that I wanted to machine and what I wanted the fixtures to be. And it makes those things visible. So I hope you liked this one. Hopefully it was helpful to show how you can transfer stock into different places in your assembly so you can see what you have remaining. And you can start with that rather than just doing a generic block or whatever it is that you want to start from. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you like this video, it'd be awesome if you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be great if you consider doing that as well. As always, thanks for watching.